I guess let's uh, go ahead and um, jump into the Days Gone component of this. Um, so yeah, to build off the last story, let's reiterate that Days Gone sold it like an astronomical amount of units, which is surprising given that it did not have a high critical reception. Um, so it was, it's not that Days Gone 2 was cancelled, it's that it was never greenlit in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, so in a series of interviews held by David Jaffe, who's the creator of God of War and Twisted Metal series, who's a fucking asshat, that platform's bigotry and tried to come at me, so fuck you, buddy. Uh, (laughs) uh, he had an interview with, uh, Days Gone directors Jeff Ross and John Garvin and, uh, revealed a slew of behind the scenes information. So according to Garvin, Metacritic is everything. This and th- this is them saying this. This is not necessarily 100% fact. These are their words. Uh, so according to Garvin, Metacritic is everything to Sony. So uh, even a title that sells as well as Days Gone won't necessarily be greenlit for a second chance if it receives a Metacritic score of 71. Um, my words here. Uh, it's worth noting that sequels tend to have easier production cycles and typically alleviate woes from their predecessor. So you can look at like something like Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2, Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2. Um, and in contrast, a title such as Gravity Rush 2 can receive a Metacritic score of 80 and not sell well, which can also prompt the lack of a greenlit sequel. So it's it's a myriad of factors. As you can see by some of the other stuff we're going to list, this dude's trying to push the blame on a bunch of other multiple things and we'll get to the core of why days gone two was never greenlit. Mm. Uh, Garvin is quick to place the blame of days gone shortcomings on a multitude of factors, such as blaming gamers for not buying games at launch at full price, uh, stating, if you love a game, buy it at fucking full price. I can't tell you how many times I've seen gamers say, yeah, I got that on sale. I got that on PS plus, whatever. Um, so let alone the fact that audiences are unable to tell if they love a product before they even buy it because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, shaming players for not placing blind faith in a title that's received middling review scores isn't great optics. Um, it also kind of ignores that, uh, sales play that, uh, discounted sales play a central focal point in expanding audiences. That's how games get not, not even necessarily cold stats. Like this is just, this is just the way the market works now. Sales. Uh, can still be uh, widely successful. Um, it's also worth noting that Days Gone suffered an extremely troubled development cycle over its seven-year production. So that would be seven even before... Years? Jesus Christ. Yeah, seven fucking years. Jeez. Um, this point in particular served as a sticking point to Sony, who wanted to push the final product out the door to recuperate their sunk costs. Uh, Garvin departed the studio due to personality clashes, not because of any perceived failures as creative director. Uh, Jason Schreier backs this up by citing tension between the old guard of Ben Studio and newer talents, uh, often clashing with one another, with Garvin yelling at, a, yelling at employees on countless occasions. Uh, Garvin himself admits to being unable to adapt to working with a larger team due to personality clashes and that training and classes designated to improve his behavior were unsuccessful. Um, if this is evident anywhere, all you have to do is look at Garvin blaming Days Gone's shortcomings on not appealing to a wider audience and implementing, quotes, a woke and politically correct elements. So, there you have it. The director was kind of a fucking shithead. Just mm-hmm. all around. Like, so so many production woes. It, it, it's, this is entirely a leadership problem. And he's kicking and screaming, blaming everything in the world. Cause, cause like days gone, isn't a fundamentally bad game. And like they improved it, um, past, um, what reviewers played cause they, they updated it. So it's a smoother experience, whatever. I, th- I think it's a pretty middle of the road, pretty good game. It sold well, but Sony's just kind of had it up to there with, with, um, with Ben basically. I'm right. enjoying what I'm playing of it right now. Cause I, I mean, kiss my ass whatever i'm playing it on ps plus right now um yeah means you don't love it you didn't buy it at full price do you want the video game market to crash blaine i think i I already sunk over 200 dollars in the new year leave me the fuck alone Um, papa kodak needs that needs that fifth yacht come on blaine no 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 kodak doesn't need a fifth yacht he needs he he needs to pay me back for his fourth one (sighs) i almost want to answer this anecdotally in that there's there's a show called Bojack Horseman that the entire premise is a wildly problematic main character that you're not supposed to sympathize with 
goes on very admittedly wacky antics, but usually circles back to commentary on abusive or toxic relationships, um, people's inability. There's a kitten looking around that corner of that uh, curtain. Um, <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, uh, or or think substance things are dealing with substance abuse, dealing with mental illness, um, a lot of other things, and, mm-hmm. and you know just very dark themes. Yeah, not things that you would co- typically call woke or politically correct. Yeah. Um. There's. There's. Oh, I had the next one lined up in my head, and now oh, um, one of the most celebrated, uh, like, uh, sort of cop drama, but I almost consider it the anti cop drama that I've seen in years is True Detective, a series with two of the most unlikable, like despicable, despisable main characters, but they're <laughs> written specifically so that you don't empathize with them. Right. And any level that you do kind of sympathize with what they're going through is completely th- washed away by the fact of you see like a very one of the most realistic depictions of the police that I've ever seen, like actually showing how corrupt and disgusting it is. Um yeah. Never and you know that's that's a popular ass show even now that first season of True Detective. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I could start naming things. Venture Brothers until I got canceled was one of the most popular cartoons and adult me- adult cartoons in media, and was not just subversive, not just made political commentary, but was also not what I would call PC or woke, it, it, even to a detriment in its earlier seasons, and that I regret, but found its footing and eventually it didn't lose an edge of like being able to say like some whack at some like wild ass shit but it managed to stop punching down at the same time Mm -hmm. um the reason i say all this is because just because people told you your writing is not all that and your characters suck doesn't mean that the sjw's are coming to just fucking with their pitchforks and that's why they don't understand your game well i think that's the thing um uh, i get that deacon and his and boozer I, I'm barely in the game, but I get, and I'm sorry to talk over you, just I gotta get this thought out. I get that these characters are very transparently not supposed to be people that you necessarily empathize with, but that you want to see where their stories go. I understand that it's supposed to put you in maybe a different headspace than your own. I understand, like, when they give you two ca- encampments, and they're both run by fucking terrible people, that you're supposed to be stuck in this situation of, God, well, what, what decision do I make when I don't have an easy yes or no? But that being said, it's all done so bluntly and ham-fistedly that, like, I'm I'm not engaged by this on any major level. I'm just kind of, like, finding things that I enjoy in between going, okay, yeah, that's your typical brutalist, survivalist, a post-apocalyptic zombie thing. Yeah, and I think on the on those lines, it's like, if something is made for for a concept or made uh it makes sense within its own universe or its own world and everything even if things are quote unquote offensive if i i I don't like the idea of people literally crying wolf and being like oh uh if there's any criticism on my on my art it just means automatically these this group of people are coming for me and and they didn't actually you know take in my the form of media that is being presented to them well for context too um because uh, how far are you in the story, Blaine? I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. No, no, no. I, I just gonna... met uh, Tucker. And okay. I'm, I, I'm literally, my, my PS4 is on rest mode because I didn't know that it was going to hit me with the decision when I got to the bike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to choose to give her a bunch of drugs or I have to choose to give Copeland a bunch of drugs. And I don't really want to give either of them drugs because one of them is running like a borderline fascist fucking prison camp and slave camp. And the Mm -hmm. other one is like a weird gun nut truther first to second amendment nut job. Yeah. So I'm just like, this sucks, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I get it. I mean, the writing in that is actually not bad. Yeah. So, so I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to talk in like broad generalizations. Like, um, this, uh, director, what's his name? Garvin, like him kicking and screaming saying like, Oh, the game didn't, uh, isn't doing well. They were not getting green because we're not woke enough. Um, it is highly ironic considering they position their main character as being a diametrically opposed to every single thing in this game. Like, uh, both Tucker and, uh, what's the other dude's name? Copeland that runs the other camp. 
Mark Copeland, I, I, I think I, is his name. Like he'll hear him over the radio doing like some fucking like NRA bullshit, and yeah, and, and Deacon is like literally screaming at the radio by himself. It's like this is so stupid. What the fuck? That's a See, I actually like those idea. bits. I yeah. like when he just starts talking to himself because I do shit like that. But yeah, he, he's like so evidently opposed to it and it's like so it's, it's, it's obviously shining like those two camps in an extremely negative light like regardless yeah. of how um quote unquote necessary or like those are the only options in the world like that that's a separate thing mm-hmm. but um later on in the game there is a um there's an lgbt relationship later on in the game so him just being like oh we're not woke enough like it, like this like i don't even know where this narrative came from that this game is like some kind of like fucking right wing wet dream i'm just like no this this game is very much not that and you you did have those elements so for you blaming the the failures of your game on not having those elements despite them being implemented in there i like this guy's just talking out of his ass the biggest criticism i've ever heard of the game was people saying that especially in the back half that it feels rushed both narr- it feels rushed narratively and that i've even heard people say that it seemed like there were going to be it, in certain situations it almost there's there's things that happen I, i'm also trying because i know some spoilers but i don't know the full context so i'm also trying not to if anyone does play it it's on ps uh plus and i don't necessarily want to spoil the story for you um but like i know that there's apparently like ways the story goes that almost feel like completely opposed to how Deacon has behaved as a character up to that point. Almost as if you could have chosen two paths and kind of gone down different narratives when instead they didn't have time to finish that. This is a theory I've seen someone say. I don't know if this is actually true. I, 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 don't speak I, for the developers. I will back that up to a degree in that it definitely feels like at some point they decided to cut that stuff off because like the central issue I have with that game is it is it just might be the so... stuff with Boozer that you've alluded to to me that I know exists, but um, I don't know what it is. I don't remember what it is. I just know that there's something involving him where you find out he's like worse than you th- would have thought, but you're not really given any option to challenge him or something. You're just kind of, you can go with it and finish the quest or you can just not complete the quest from what I Maybe, maybe I don't remember what that's in regards to, but I was thinking more s- I, I I won't say what it is, but it, it yeah, is yeah, definitely yeah. the lat and latter half of the game where it, it would seem like it's some kind of like end game or mid near end game choice that you do. Um, but that game is just so extremely bloated, and they spent seven years on this with like no clear direction and kind of stumbling over themselves. Uh, they could yeah. they could have shaved a lot of years of development if they had just tried to make a more concise product, and that would have in turn just made a better game. It's it's a it's a mess. I almost wonder, like, there's bits of, like, the open world that I really... Because it's weird. Usually, I, you know me. I'm not, like... I get very intimidated by open world, like, especially Ubisoft-style open world games where it's just, like, all these things on the map and you got to do them all because my brain just goes, you need to. With this one, I actually really find it charming that it almost reminds me of, like, the first Red Dead Redemption and maybe to other degrees the second one where like you'll have stuff that just happens and it genuinely feels organic even though I know it's all scripted or like procedurally scripted like there are events that are gonna happen no matter what but like where they might happen on the map is different like uh you can randomly stumble across like a scene just blood on the ground or a bike or something and you're saying go examine it so you examine it and then you examine another thing you track and then you find your way to like a murdered camp or one time when i th- i did that i found like a bunch of killed uh drifters and i was like oh a bunch of freaks are around and i killed them and then i looted the bodies and that's the end of that little like mini side quest but then another time i found a bike and a thing to examine and when i'm following the trail i'm literally following the map because that's what the game told me to do last time and without realizing it step into a snare and i get captured and i'm like Oh, is this just going to reset me to a checkpoint like when I failed this one thing? And then I'm like, oh, no, it actually has me being captured, and now I have to escape. Like, that's cool. That's mm-hmm. good. Um, but, like, but then there's other shit. Like, I don't know. Like, there's stuff that still feels, like, almost kind of unnecessary. Like, like I don't know. Like, the infestations are cool, but it also made me think of, like, I'm basically playing State of Decay 2 and just destroying play carts. And it's mm-hmm. like, I get it. I get it, but at the same time, I don't know. Is this just padding, or is what I'm asking myself? Fifty percent of that game is padding. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and and I'm starting to see that. Plus, then they do the whole thing of like, oh, you have your cool bike in the beginning, and then it gets broken, and you have it stolen, so you have to rebuild it. And I'm like, 
Okay, we're we're doing like a Metroid the, thing with that. The early hours of that game are not great. It I is actually not doing... don't. I'm not disliking it. I'm just. I'm. I guess it's because I'm just so. I'm so able to look see the see the strings that I'm getting better at seeing all the little strings trying to like trick me into thinking things aren't what they are. And like... mm -hmm. Also, white balance, please, for the love of God, don't fucking make your menu <laughs> screen just all white. I spent like two days trying to think, is it my TV? Is it not? And no, it wasn't my TV. It was just the fucking screen is too bright. My eyes had to adjust. <laughs> I, yeah. I use dark themes on like basically everything I use. Mm -hmm. just, I Nothing kills me more than just like a bright white screen. I'm just like, no, no, thank you. Just use black. It's It's fine. Literally. It's better. Uh, side note, uh, there was a man that was reported to have created uh, the whitest white so far known to man that reflects 98% of the sun's rays. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> I need to Google that later. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. It's insane. <laughs> oh, and um, uh, to get back to the original point, like uh, I mean, you pretty much said it, Jose, before, with, like, you know, I, I can under, I understand, because uh, someone I think we both follow, I don't want to name names, because I'm actually not, I'm not trying to put him on blast, I disagreed with one of his takes, but he made some really other good points. Um, I think, I understand someone being very emotionally charged and being, like, invested in something, like, you put seven years of your life into this, so I don't even want to fault the guy for maybe feeling strongly about what he made and feeling defensive of it, but mm -hmm. then... Then say that. Then say, you know, it sucks when you put seven years of your life into something and for one bullshit reason or another, um, you just, it's like, fuck you. You don't get to have a second shot. Like, I don't even think the comment, the literal comment, if you want, to, if you want, like, I'm going to boil his thing down even further. The idea of, if you want to see more of the thing, support the thing, emphatically support the thing put your money towards it if you can afford it i think we can all agree that it is a good thing to say like hey if you really like that thing spend the money on it and try, try to support it because that will at least do something to get more things but when you twist that concept around to be like well i well like like when you t that, that makes sense of a situation where like this like let's say let's say it did phenomenally in reviews and it did like the same amount, like, decent to low in Metacritic, and then, like, they got the no, you're not getting a sequel, I would, this would be a whole different conversation. I feel like we would be saying, you know, it really sucks for this guy because him and his team really busted their asses despite it all. This would be like a like a deadly premonition conversation, mm -hmm. something like that. Well, I, th but, I think to even uh, distill it from there, it's, um, yeah. it, it, like, if it wasn't, I'm not going to, I don't want to put solely the blame on him, but even he admittedly does it. Sony did not greenlight it because they have issues with Ben. They don't necessarily have issues with Days Gone. Exactly. Like it sold not well. They would have been throwing that IP in the trash. Mm -hmm. We've seen Stranger Things. I mean, I'm not like fuck. Um, we got a Demon Souls remake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. This is just such a freaking okay. On uh, one, you already fucked up by going on David Jaffe's stream. That's fuck yeah. up number one. Two. You are burning so many bridges, and you're you're, and you're tainting um, Days Gone's uh, reputation. Yeah. And like three, like how does this benefit you in the slightest besides just bitching and ranting? It like, makes like him sound like a spoiled fucking child. Mm -hmm. It's you're not doing yourself any favors here, dude. Like if I if I was a higher up at Sony, I'd be like, dude, can you just please, please shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's it's I I agree with Blaine. I, I think it's like, you know, it, it, it's it's being it's not having sort of any sort of grounding in how how uh, I'm trying to think right now. I can't think of the word uh, how <laughs> how thankful he or grateful he should be for the amount of success that he has already in general exactly. and now, and the fact that he's going on a, you know, a podcast and ranting and raving and bitching about, you know, all this and all that. Like, Oh, you know, it, it's like, what's it called? Ha what's a good example. It's like handing someone a, a brick of gold and them complaining that it's dirty. No, 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 I got even, I even got a better one for you. <laughs> it's, it's someone that gets handed a brick of gold and then, 
f- four years later is saying, why isn't this platinum? Yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a really good one. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just, I, I hate it when people, when people don't have perspective or humility, it's like, all right, well, there goes my, a- any respect I had for you. Exactly. Like this, this has literally done nothing to benefit days gone the slightest aside from people are talking about days gone i guess this is the most people have talked about it since it came out so So. in some weird way i guess his bitching worked (laughs) it's not even it's not even necessarily getting sales because it's it's free on ps plus right now or part of the collection i you know what the the pc version is coming out in may i guess so but Yeah. yeah which that's gonna be like 40 or 50 bucks so hey I mean, I, also, I still think also, it's a decent game. I still think people should not maybe should yeah. play, but it's it's a good game. Well, we also have to think about here's here's the thing. All y'all remember being like tweens or or teenagers, right? And like when you started playing video games and all that stuff. Most of the time, I don't think uh, I don't think like tweens or teenagers are fully involved in the drama of the gaming industry. I think they, the, at least for me, when I was that age, I was like, oh, cool game. I want to play it. Plays no, the game. Literally. Moves on. Mm-hmm. Like, it literally, it's like, if I like the game, I'll go back to it. But, like, when you're that age, you don't care. You're not, you don't know anything that's going on in the gaming yeah. industry. You just know what games are being presented to you. Uh, and that's it. You know, you're not really fully tuned into to the adult world yet. <laughs> I literally... Earlier today on Twitter, I remember making a comment that I was just like, you know, not for nothing. I I am actually, despite whatever issues I have with what the guy said, like, I am genuinely enjoying my time with it, getting into it. And, like, this is a game that teenage me would have just gone batshit for. Like, this would have been perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Teenage teenage Blaine would be losing her fucking mind. Would be like, (laughs) this is perfect. This is the game I always wanted. Like, it's Mm -hmm. tailor-made. And yeah. I mean that as a compliment. I mean that as a compliment. Like, there's good. There's tons of people, teenagers, whatever, that like look at the game like that. Mm-hmm. But then don't fucking spit in their fucking faces with like, why didn't you buy it full price then? Yeah, that, that's why such a fucking get that's a such a shitty thing to say to people. Is because it's like one, it's already contradictory. You should buy a game you love at full price. Like motherfucker, how are you supposed to know if you love it if you don't have it yet? It's well, yeah, no, it's exactly. like yeah. I mean, you, you should like, never... I, I used to I used to work at GameStop, and you know how you know how many times I would get people coming in to return a brand new game that they unwrapped, but the policy was that we couldn't we couldn't return games that have already broken the seal, which literally makes zero sense considering yeah. it's like. How does someone know they like a game if they haven't been able to play it yet? Well, see, that, you know? that's why even I, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but like that's why I love Steam's refund policy. Like you can play up to two hours or um, like 14 days, like from the purchase. It's it's extremely consumer friendly and everyone else needs to catch the fuck up. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, also, it seems like I, if you I, just make your case, even if you're over those limits, like as long as you're not being an idiot about it. Like if you make a, a, a mm-hmm. legitimate case, they'll usually listen to it. Yeah, you can totally appeal, and their Steam is like crazy generous with it. Oh yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, on that note, GameStop can burn. Anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like it, it, it's just it is so shitty to try to shame your your player base, and it's uh you know especially now with 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 the end times. Well, the end times seem to be coming to somewhat of an end, relatively quick, like in some fashion. <laughs> Um, just this you can't expect everyone to just be rushing out there to spend 60 or I guess like now even $70 like I I usually have so many games on my backlog like unless it's something I'm like crazy hyped for for like um like Resident Evil Village I'm not gonna buy your game at launch at full price I'm gonna wait for it to go yeah. on sale I'll, I'll, I'll grab it and then I'll probably play it like four months down the road that's exactly what happened with um Yakuza for me yeah. um fuck where was I gonna go with that Shit, I can take a segue while you think. <laughs> yeah, you might save me, save me, Blaine. Tag, tag. Um, it, it, something else I've been thinking about with this is like, oh damn, now I lost my thought. What? It's <laughs> contagious, Jose. <laughs> what did you do to me? Whoa, what was that? Oh I shit, Corey, okay. save us. Oh, oh no, I remember, I remember, I remember. Um, it, it, it's also crazy to talk to think about the fact that like, 
the the comment of oh buy your game at full price if you want to see more and it's like well we've seen in the past maybe i mean maybe i'm too old but i remember when capcom and kg nafune were like oh do you want Mega Man legends 3 make sure you buy this other game that's not necessarily related but if you buy it maybe we'll make the other and then they didn't make it they canceled it or they silently like never approved it you get shit like i mean that happens time and time again there is i hate to say this because it sounds borderline conspiratorial there's no guarantee that that thing you like is going to get made with the way the video game industry the triple a video game industry is their metrics are half the time made up bullshit that doesn't make any sense or is not made up but they don't follow it anyway right mm-hmm. like half you know the time I, I don't mean to jump on my pulpit but half the time it's them getting mad that why are not you consumers liking the things that we want you to like that we mm-hmm. decided you liked without even consulting <laughs> what you actually like oh you uh, know what uh, Rob, ramen cool. nomad totally reminded me what i was going to say um so yeah 60 dollars is a lot to ask for someone if they aren't already excited about it yeah. and just like for a uh i guess like an aware or oh, what's what I'm looking for? Informed consumer, like if they see your game comes out, like even if they're interested and they see like these reviews drop, and just like, hey, this game's kind of a mess right now. It's got a lot of technical issues. Wait for them to patch it. You can't fucking blame people for not buying it at launch. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to say something, Corey? Yeah, it's just uh, pretty much the um, in the same light. It, it it's I've I've had many moments where I would. uh I would wait. I would be like, oh, you know, I I can wait for that game, or you know, I I can I can uh, I can wait till it goes on sale, or maybe it'll go on PlayStation Plus or something. You know, I've had moments like that, like, oh, I'll play it eventually, but I wasn't super thrilled about it. So yeah, it's like paying full price for for a game that people aren't genuinely excited about. And also on on what Blaine was saying is that like, yeah, w- they're saying why aren't you the consumer liking what we want you to like? And I'm just like, I'm like, and they, and then they sit there and they wonder why they're failing. And it's just, it's so, it's such a deluded mess uh, that these people that run these companies or run these, these groups of people to make games that they just, they're deluded to the point where they don't actually know what consumers want. Uh, They just have, they have creative visions. And if the consumers don't like their creative vision, uh, then it's sort of like a personal attack attack on them, and so right. it's. This- I, I hate to be judgmental too, and because this is going to sound kind of wild, but it's like it's big part of it is because a lot of these people in charge are not they're not quote unquote gamers. They're not yeah. really people that are into it. And I don't mean like oh you have to be like a card carrying gamer to be and work at a company, but like. Like, like, you know, we, we joke about, like, Reggie fils And, like, clearly the person... The guy's a nice dude, I'm sure. Um, and he cares about the video games. He cares about the video game industry. That guy wasn't a video game person. He was from fucking Pizza Hut. And before that, I don't know what else. But he was a marketer. He was a marketer and a businessman, first and foremost. And a lot of these people that sign on to these companies to either run their marketing or PR or even the CEOs are not people that got in this because, man, I just love video games. They're working a job because they know marketing. And you're going to then get crossover of like, well, I, this is my prediction. And when you're, if you're out of touch with that user base, yeah, even on that level, you then to, you, you have shit go. like, why isn't, why isn't the new looty shooty thing selling when we barely fucking put a polish on? Why did Anthem happen? I guess is what I'm saying. It's yeah. Like, why did Anthem happen? Why didn't, why did, how come people aren't buying this thing that we did no research on ahead of time, but pretended no, they, we did? They definitely need, uh, way more uh people in there that actually are at least they like video games and they play video games they they at least you know because i feel like if you're gonna be in the video game industry you should have knowledge of the history of video games Mm. as a whole too um you should just know your stuff and you should be in touch with uh you know gamers and gamer focus groups and and all this you know really listen to the people that are like coming in and testing the games, you know, for those play tests and stuff that mm-hmm. you come that the companies like to have. And so it's like, uh, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. They're bringing in people that are marketing based, but they're not, they don't know much about gaming as a whole, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
I th I thought of a maybe slightly mean joke because because like we're talking about leadership here, people that don't have perspective. Um, and um, and uh, I think uh, not the last episode, maybe the one before that, we were talking about Jim Ryan, um, ne lacking some perspective on like why people care about game preservation and whatnot. And there's just that famous quote, just like, oh, this looks ancient. Why would anyone want to play with that? Uh, do you think his partner, when they when they broach the topic of divorce, if they're going to toss that in his face when he's 70 years old? <laughs> they're going to walk up to him and be like, Jim, you look ancient. Why would anyone want to play with that? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Uh, on that note uh, I love you Jose uh, that's gonna do it for the show <laughs> uh, oh I do want to say one thing before we I, I know we don't have time to go through what we're replaying but I do want to just say one thing um, I've been playing <laughs> Shadow Man Remastered for the PC build um, it's by Night Dive I, the reason I'm just I'm shoving this at the end is because you know these guys it's, we've talk, spent this whole time talking about a bunch of AAA companies that don't know what the fuck they're doing they don't give a shit about their base they don't give a shit about the people that get affected by their shitty practices their workers that get crunched and whatnot um, Night Dive does amazing work I feel like if you if you already know probably and and if and if you don't just look through their catalog of games they've redone recently Shadow Man is the newest one and it's amazing to see a game like that that I thought was totally forgotten for the longest time actually get its due and be brought into not into just the modern game sphere, but also like just completely revitalized with, with like new lighting and new uh, and new te not new textures, but you know a new look at those textures. Um, and I also just want to end this on some positivity because I think they deserve your support and they deserve <laughs> a full price buy because they make good stuff and they've proven that. It's true. Doom 64 on the Switch is fucking amazing. Please go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey, you got any last words of wisdom? Um, any high aspirations? High aspirations. Um, well, I... Oh, I guess the podcast doesn't know because I haven't been here in a while, but I got my first Moderna shot, so that's awesome. Um, and thank you for the dab, Jose. Uh <laughs> <laughs> may the lord not strike you down right now um <laughs> uh and then i believe our my our second shot is basically may 15th so we'll be fully vaccinated by that time so that's that's my exciting news you'll be blazing uh, through that i'm sure oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hilarious plane hilarious Ugh. um and then secondly you know you guys Boy, can though. catch me obviously on my channel king cory bear on twitch um i stream monday and tuesdays at 6 p.m pacific standard time and fridays at 7 p.m pacific standard time you can always catch me on twitter and instagram as well yeah cory's always streaming so you should uh definitely check him out he's definitely chronic about it <laughs> yes uh i'm very i'm very consistent now and i'm actually i'm very happy because i've met so many different people and made so many different friends just from like delving back into it and really like taking twitch seriously so i'm like i'm i'm really excited about all of it and you I have know, uh... i never have to be dubious about what you're doing either because you're very clear when you put out the tweets and everything there's no doubt yeah exactly and that's that's all that's pretty much it just a nice cozy corner with your neighborhood king cory bear <laughs> uh you are a constant inspiration on that front Corey. the way that uh, you dedicate to your stream just like your whole the entire vibe you have on it. it's not one nice big family a kingdom one might say of the mm -hmm. celtic variety it's not, it's not celtic anymore i guess there's Celtic backtones, but I, uh, I I felt like this name change, this name change from Celtic Scribe, for those that don't know, um, it, it was necessary. And I felt more like me. Obviously, like now my profile picture is different. Everything's different. Everything's sort of gearing towards towards bears, but we're keeping sort of those kingly and medieval Celtic backgrounds as well. So mm -hmm. Plus, now you got to have bear emojis or emotes. Um, yeah, they're so fun. Now you get a persona, <laughs> more or less. I mean, I feel like my entire life I was a fursona, and it was I was meant to be a bear, and that's just there you go. both there in you stature go. and in character. <laughs> um, I guess on my front, I've uh, 
yeah, been directly inspired by Corey to go ahead and start um, solidifying my plan for Twitch. Um, someone was telling me, and I didn't even really think about it, but you know, I have daily content going out, whatever, and it is a hell of a production log. Like I was, I looked at my freaking spreadsheet. I I use to keep track of when to post stuff, uh, what's unlisted, what's public, what's on Patreon. I'm just like. This is basically what I was doing at my old job, and it's like it is a big ass fucking spreadsheet. This part, just like I need a life. <laughs> but this time you're doing it for yourself, and that's what's that's what counts. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. but um, definitely um, solidifying my approach to uh, to Twitch. Very very happy with the streams we've been doing. Been having a great time, and Corey has been the most generous planet on the freaking planet. The most generous <laughs> planet. In. Yes. Hold on, is it the most generous planet on the planet? Got wait, it. Did, right. Wait, did I did I call you a planet? You did. I don't. Oh no. I, just, well, I guess I guess, but I'm not really offended. Are, I'm more. Well, confused. you know what? You you are the best planet on the planet, Corey. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure I'm not the one that's high? Like, <laughs> I mean, I might. Wait, was it you? I was telling about the cat thing the other day. The uh, no. It was the cat wait, who, thing. Who's I talking to? Okay, th this is the last thing I'll put. Like, <laughs> okay, oh, fuck. Let, let me do my Twitch thing real quick. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So, yeah, yeah. Do it. Taking steps to be very proactive on Twitch. Um, posting dedicated schedules on a weekly basis. So this week I'm streaming uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 5 p.m. That kind of goes on for at least two hours. Uh, the the demo, the next Resident Evil Village demo, will be doing on Saturday. Um, having a good time with Evil Within 2. It's a fun time. Thanks everyone for showing up. Thank you for, to Corey for uh, being the best planet on the planet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, have, um, uh, I have several moons. <laughs> okay. Fuck. I don't remember who I was telling this. It was somebody though. So and I, I should probably look this up before I talk out my ass, but it's probably funnier if I do it this way. So take this with a grain of salt. So Everyone loves dogs. Dogs are nice, beautiful animals. They love you unconditionally. People also love cats. And apparently, something to do with this is that when cats take dumps, they have like tiny little parasites in them, whatever, right? And so, whenever you smell anything in life, that's only because there's particles physically floating into your nose. So, like, whenever you smell shit, you literally have shit in your nose. Like, if it's, it's tiny particles, but you literally have shit in your nose. Um, so that tiny little molecule of whatever a parasite in the cat shit gets in your nose and it kind of cordyceps you into being more favorable towards cats. It's kind of brainwashing you to love cats more. <laughs> That's so devious. It's fucking what? evil, dude. <laughs> Uh, and then I told Jose that no wonder, um, no wonder that people used to, like the ancient Egyptians used to worship cats. It makes mm -hmm. sense now. You know what? I'm looking it up right now. Were they just sitting around all day huffing cat shit in bags? Like what? <laughs> I mean, I don't imagine there was much hygiene to the point that we have with cat litter and stuff. So I think cats just like shit in fields and grass and like the, the city grounds and stuff. I don't like this. Here, here, here's a science magazine organization website. I'll post the link here. I, I, I don't have the time to like verify this to peer review it or anything like that. But I'm not from, reading it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shit, where is it? Scientists uh -huh. have long hypothesized that T. Gandhi plays a role in mental. No fuck. Where was it? I don't know. Read, read the article. I, <laughs> this is a thing, apparently. Oh, oh and then cats. The article, I can't also. Read that. One last thing that Chaibum reminded me of, uh, this is my last word, and, and is that uh, Devour, for those that do not know, uh, this super spooky multiplayer game about Demon Lady where you burn goats. Uh, yeah, that is getting a brand spanking new level. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it's on Wednesday. Uh, it's called The Asylum, and it continues the story from the first level. Uh, so I'm excited. Nice. To play it. Are you, you going to be streaming that with a full crew too? Oh yeah, you know it. Nice. Definitely check out uh, Corey's stream for that on Wednesday. Not Wednesday, Friday. Friday. Yes, yes I will. Be, Friday. I will be there. I will, I will watch. It comes out Wednesday, but we're gonna get some practice in, and then we're gonna play. We're gonna stream it Friday. So nice.
All right. And with that, I think that's the show. Thank you everyone for hanging out. Um, at the next stream, at least on this channel, is going to be Wednesday at 5 p.m. PST. All right. Woo. See you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.